And welcome to InfoWars Nightly News. This is Mike Adams sitting in for Alex Jones tonight. I'm the editor of Natural News. Thanks for joining us tonight. We've got an incredible lineup of news for you. We have exclusive video from Alex, who's on the road in the southwest of the United States, right now in Arizona, Grand Canyon area, shooting video, revisiting the sites that he covered in previous films to give you an update on what has happened in the last decade or so since first covering that area. We've also got stories on uh, the organics, the invasion of organics by Monsanto and chemical companies that are trying to get new ingredients, uh, or I should say existing ingredients, newly approved as organic. Even though they're not organic, they're synthetic chemicals and additives in many cases. We're going to be covering that story with an interview with Mark Castell, the executive director of the Cornucopia Institute. We've got a great lineup of stories for you tonight, including something on Fix-A-Flat. Yes, indeed, this is part of the news tonight here on InfoWars Nightly News. So beginning, the big news of today is the Super Committee. This is the debt committee. It's entirely unconstitutional, completely illegal, and it is failing. Gee, we couldn't see that coming. The super committee has basically abandoned any idea that it's going to be able to reach a debt agreement, some kind of deal. And instead, these automatic cuts are supposed to start kicking in to try to bring the United States back into fiscal balance. Of course, that goal is completely out of reach at this point. Because right now, see, the U.S. national debt has now risen above $15 trillion. And it's climbing, and $4 trillion of that was added under the Obama administration. Yay, Obama, $4 trillion more in debt that we will probably never be able to pay back. But there's more on this story. Uh, the, much of the burden, almost $500 billion, is expected to fall on the defense and national security budgets reports the, the mainstream news, but here's the kicker on that. It's not really a cut out of defense spending. It's not really a cut out of the Pentagon. It's just a reduction in the growth of spending. So it's not like we're actually spending any less. It's just some more paper shuffling and smoke and mirrors to make us think that we're making cuts in the national debt even when we aren't. So the super committee is failing. The national debt spending effort to get it under control is failing. Congress is failing. What isn't failing? Well, <laughs> uh, there's a lot more of that coming up tonight here on, on, on InfoWars Nightly News. But uh, Fix a Flat is not failing. That's actually working, as we'll cover later. Moving on, college president vows uh, to investigate the pepper spraying incident that happened at the University of California. The president, uh, Mark Udoff, says, quote, free speech is part of the DNA of this university, and nonviolent protest has long been central to our history. It's a value we must protect with vigilance. And yet, students who were engaged in peaceful, nonviolent protest were pepper sprayed by a couple of thuggish-looking cops dressed in black walking in intimidation style with all kinds of gear on and just casually in an evil way spraying these protesters. Here's the video. Here he is spraying these people who are now trying to protect themselves, ducking down in a fetal position to try to protect themselves. They aren't a threat. Do they look like a threat to you? Oh, but look at this thug right here. Look at this gangster. Oh, he's, yeah, look at him. He's, he, ran, he ran out of pepper spray. He needs more. He needs help from his, his other thuggish colleagues dressed in black who are going to spray these students in their faces, too. Oh, it's like an orgy of power and pepper spray. Now they're going to drag them off by their limbs and feet. Oh, yeah, to clear that sidewalk. Woo! Oh, boy. Drooling with power. Makes you feel good if you're a cop, I guess, huh? All right, a little bit of satire there in a sad, pathetic situation. Watching that actually makes me angry. And uh, I'm not trying to go after the good cops that are out there who really do good work. But those cops that we just saw, in my opinion, they are criminals. And they're just drunk with power. And they love to exercise it. They love to spray pepper in, this, in the faces of these innocent students who are obviously nonviolent. You know, imagine what would have happened if one of those students pulled out a knife or a firearm and started fighting back. I'm not saying they should do that. Peaceful protest is the way to go. But they were the ones being assaulted in this case. Students were being assaulted by the cops. 
Uh, let's hope uh, we can get on top of that situation. Moving on, we have a, a, a case of a White House shooter now uh, who drove by the White House allegedly and fired an assault rifle, which lodged a bullet into some of the bulletproof glass in the, in the White House building here. Let's see. Mr. Chapman t said he had not heard Mr. Ortega talk of taking violent action. Mr. Ortega is the one who has allegedly committed this crime of violence. But more than a year ago, he recalled, Mr. Ortega, and by the way, this is being reported in the New York Times, Mr. Ortega and others watched an anti-government film. Oh my goodness, an anti-government film? Are there such things? On the internet, it's called The Obama Deception, which was written, directed, and produced by Alex Jones, a Texas-based conservative talk show host who has espoused a number of conspiracy theories involving the federal government, says the New York Times. Well, here we go, it's Alex's fault. It's always Alex's fault. Well, let's break this down for a second. First of all, Alex never promotes violence. He always says that we should approach this peacefully, peaceful revolution. Secondly, why is the New York Times calling Alex Jones extremist? Saying it's a path to extremism. Is it extreme to open your eyes and see the truth about debt spending and see the truth about the wars that we are engaged in on this planet? Is it extreme to want to know the truth about what's happening behind the scenes in our world, behind the power centers that run our world? Is that extreme? Uh, well, apparently in, to the New York Times it is. But I tell you what's not extreme to the New York Times is drinking your fluoride, taking your vaccine shots, taking your psychiatric drugs, tuning into the TV like a zombied out mindless drone. That's not extreme, that's normal. Yeah, if you do that, then you're normal, says the New York Times. You know, it, it sickens me to see these attacks on Alex Jones. They're gonna try to blame Alex for everything merely because he wants to wake people up to the truth of what's really happening out there. It's kind of a cheap shot by the New York Times, kind of a cheap pepper spray in your face kind of shot like we just saw the cops doing to the students at the University of California. I bet you, I bet you the folks at New York Times, they're pepper spraying photos of Alex Jones on their wall and laughing to, them th to themselves and thinking they're winning. Meanwhile, the New York Times is becoming rapidly extinct because Infowars.com is dominating alternative media. More and more people are turning to Infowars.com and Infowars Nightly News to find out the truth about what's really going on out there. Now, continuing with that truth, next story is, oh, what? They're blaming Alex Jones again. They're saying that Alex and Gerald Salente are causing a run on the banks. Oh yeah, this is an article in Forbes magazine. Here's uh, right out of Forbes. The title is, talk show host Alex Jones and guest, Gerald Salente, call for run on banks. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute, wait a minute. So it's not that the banks blew all their money on derivatives, no, it's not that they stole from governments. It's not that the Fed has been printing this money and using trillions to bail out the rich banksters who are laughing all the way to the bank and stealing money from the future generations of Americans and then stealing your houses and, and seizing your accounts. It's not any of that. Oh no, it's Alex Jones. Because he says maybe you should put your money in a small local bank instead of one of these big globalist banks. Oh my God, it's Gerald Salente's fault because he told, he told people to think for yourself. You know, get a little gold, get a little silver, turn your paper money into something that's really valuable. So now I guess it's Alex's and, and Gerald's fault. Well, I guess next is gonna be my fault too, because I'm sitting here in, the, in Alex's chair and, and talking about things that could wake you up as well. They're just gonna blame all of us folks, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, because you know that this is where you're getting the real hardcore truth, no matter who they blame, no matter what they say. We're gonna keep bringing you the truth right here on InfoWars Nightly News, no matter who blames us in the mainstream media. Hey, hey, it's all they can do because people aren't even reading their news stories as much anymore. They gotta go to the alternative media to find the truth of what's happening. Look, do you realize, do you realize that the financial crisis that we are in right now, you heard about that five years ago on InfoWars on the Alex Jones Show, more than five years ago. 
And every year since then, Alex has been right again and again and again, and the New York Times can't stand it, and the financial news industry can't stand it, so they're going to try to blame him for people doing what they should have done a long time ago. Get your money out of the bank and turn your useless or your about-to-be-useless paper currency into something that might have actual value. Good advice. Any, any sane person would agree to that. But moving on, let's go to a story where the mainstream media doesn't blame Alex Jones. Hmm. If we can find one. Here it is. Fake terror plots by the FBI. This has been written up in The Guardian. Fake terror plots, paid informants, the tactics of FBI entrapment are now being questioned. This is amazing. This is a mainstream media news story with the subhead. Well, here's a quote out of the story. Even more shocking was that the organization, the money, the weapons, and the motivation for this plot, this terror plot, did not come from Islamic terrorists. No, it came from the FBI itself. And an informant paid to pose as a terrorist masterminded paying big bucks for help in carrying out an attack. For McWilliams, her own government had actually cajoled and paid her beloved nephew into being a terrorist, created a fake plot, and then jailed him for it. I feel like I'm in the twilight zone, she told The Guardian. Well, first of all, I think this is interesting that this story is only appearing in The Guardian outside the United States and not in the U.S. press. The U.S. press seems reluctant to admit the truth that the FBI is keeping itself busy these days by running around and dreaming up its own elaborate terror plots and then recruiting people to carry them out and then catching them. Oh, wow, we caught ourselves again. Look at our, look at our A-plus paper. You know, they're, they're trying to take credit for catching the very terrorists that they handed them the plots and the blueprints and the weapons and the money and the motivation. It's amazing what you can do if you try to make yourself seem important as a government agency these days. Kind of like the CDC. Maybe they're going to go around and release pandemic flus so that they can then come to the rescue right into town as the hero to stop infectious disease. That's what the FBI is doing. And they've been caught over and over again. Plus, uh, of course, we've got the ATF that's been caught running guns into Mexico. You know, five years ago, I wouldn't have believed any of this. And now here I am reporting it to you and knowing that it's true. And you know it's true, too. It's astonishing. But moving on, on the police state actions that you see now in the United States of America, Tampa police have rolled out a tank to deal with a couple of dozen protesters. Oh, yes, a tank. This was posted in Business Insider. Now, if you're looking at the picture on the screen, you might say, well, I'm not sure that's really a tank. It doesn't have a main gun on it. Is it really a tank? Well, the answer is yes, we looked it up for you. Yeah, in fact, if you go to uh, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, definition number three says, a tank is an enclosed, heavily armed, and armored combat vehicle that moves on tracks. And can you show that picture again? Look at that. That's a heavily armed and armored combat vehicle that moves on tracks. I guarantee you if I bought one of these and rolled downtown into Austin up on the steps of City Hall, they would say I was driving a tank. <laughs> but I guess when the government drives a tank into a group of protesters, oh, well, suddenly it's a defensive armored personnel carrier. Don't be alarmed about it. And it probably has special gun ports through which they can uh, spray you with pepper spray. All right, now next we're going to the video of Alex Jones, who's reporting from the field in the Grand Canyon, as we promised at the beginning of this show. He's going to be bringing you some updated information about the same scenes that he visited with his earlier films. Let's take a look. Hello, friends. It's Alex Jones here reporting from the Grand Canyon. And we've hiked partway down the summit uh, before dusk, and we're only halfway down. We're going to continue on our way down, and we'll file a report for you from the bottom. Uh, we have not run into all of the out-of-control police state tactics uh, that we uh, saw at Carlsbad Caverns. And uh, I am intending later to go over to the visitor center, the main visitor center, uh, at the East Rim, where I was basically threatened with arrest 14 years ago for politely asking uh, about the United Nations Biosphere World Heritage Site, which in the documents and executive orders clearly states that 
it's being handed over to you in control along with the buffer zones around it for collateral on the national debt as we've now seen other countries like Greece having their land taken and handed over to the globalist. So we're here reporting um, this particular path, it's so early nobody's out here, uh, is the famous mule train where they just start at the top and go all the way down uh, to the bottom and we're going to continue on down uh, to at least uh, the next uh, plateau uh, level. We're not going to go all the way to the Colorado because we don't have time. We've got to get back in the uh, InfoWars RV today and travel on to our next destination. We've got a lot of other high-def video we've been shooting and detailed reports we're going to be filing for InfoWars Nightly News when we get back uh, to Austin in the next few days. Uh, but continue uh, to watch the InfoWars Nightly News, 7 o'clock every night, PrisonPlanet.tv. And, of course, we're also airing the audio and video uh, while Aaron Dykes and uh, others sit in for me, like Mike Adams, the health ranger. Uh, but a lot of stuff has happened while we've been here. We've seen some globalist indoctrination at the hotel. They give you pamphlets to your children saying, remind your parents to turn the lights off, uh, become a junior ranger, spy on your parents. So when I say it's, 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 it's light police state, in this new Orwellian system, that is light. Uh, trying to uh, take your kids away basically psychologically and turn them into Stasi spies, even though it sounds like it's for a reasonable thing. Like Al Gore said, kids, tell your parents what to do. You know best. They know. Global warming's real. Pay me money. I'm Al Gore. Uh, you know, carbon dioxide kills plants. All the real um, genetic engineering, nuclear weapons, none of that's a problem. Just pay Al Gore and the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers a bunch of money for their climate exchange. So we will be filing reports on all of this. We stayed at one hotel that had a low flush and a high flush, and it was good karma and bad karma. Of course, the, uh, the good karma one, you had to push three times to, to flush solid matter. So I was like, okay, good karma. I just used uh, you know more water. Good karma, good karma, good karma. But there's just a whole bunch of stuff we're going to be covering here. Overall, though, I, I've been to the Grand Canyon at least four times previously, twice as a child, uh, once in college, and then once in America, destroyed by design. This time I actually did some of the hikes. I went to the Hermit's Rest. Oh my God, just an incredible place. Uh, this, I mean, this has got to be my favorite national park. It's an absolute treasure. But again, if they can guilt you into thinking you're bad and sell you a political agenda on the back of humans being bad, that's like a new religion where you pay pittance by uh, paying the government and globalists for, for, for the use of the earth. So I am for protecting the earth, aren't we all? We all live here. But I don't like the fact that the globalists have co-opted that and are using it as an anti-human globalist agenda that's not actually for the Earth. Okay, this is our report from inside the Grand Canyon. More coming up. Stay with us. Infowars.com. All right, that was a great video from Alex there. There's another video from Alex coming up later in this broadcast tonight, as well as an interview with Mark Castell from the Cornucopia Institute about the invasion of organics with... Uh, chemicals and a new effort by the USDA to m allow those chemicals to be considered organic. Now, uh, we've got a couple of specials coming up for you here. They're actually, they're available right now. The Patriot Special. The yearly subscription is 44% off right now. It helps you get access to everything online. Uh, this program and many of the other videos and rants and many other things, check that out at InfoWars.com. We've also got the InfoWarrior package. Get 18 Alex Jones movies on DVD. It's, it's never been offered at this price for the whole collection. 70% off. Just $129.95 plus a year of PrisonPlanet.tv. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you get all this at a, a fantastic discount. Hey, these are great gifts for all your family and friends, so check that out. I'm going to take advantage of that myself. In fact, hey, guys, I brought a $100 bill with me tonight to buy 18 Alex Jones movies. I'm going to send them to the New York Times to make sure that they're well-informed about what Alex really espouses out there. All right, we're going to break. We'll be right back here on InfoWars Nightly News. Stay with us. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com.
All right, and we're back. Welcome back. This is InfoWars Nightly News. I'm the fill-in host tonight, Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. Also, tomorrow night, Paul Joseph Watson is filling in, and then Wednesday evening, we've got Aaron Dykes tackling the show for you. He's always got great research and great information. We've got another video from Alex Jones coming up here in a few minutes, but before we get to that video, let's start with hackers hitting the U.S. water treatment system, or so we've been told. That's right, the mainstream media is reporting that an Illinois water treatment facility was struck by a hacker from Russia who managed to hack in and then rapidly start and stop the pump over and over again until the pump failed. And this pump was supposed to be providing water to thousands of homes. Now the BBC covered this story with the conventional viewpoint, but we have some questions about this here on InfoWars Nightly News. Let's see. MSNBC has the story, no, I'm sorry, Washington Post reported, quote, news of the incident became public after Joe Weiss, an industry security expert, obtained a report dated November 10th and collected by an Illinois State Intelligence Center that monitors security threats. <laughs> the original source of the information was unknown and impossible to immediately verify. Well, so that raised some questions among the researchers here at InfoWars who began to look into the situation further and they found that there are more questions than answers on this issue. In fact, in Security News Daily, a story reveals that there's a huge gap in this explanation. In fact, Amber Sabin is the public information officer for City Water, Light and Power in Illinois. That's the Municipal Electric and Water Utility for Springfield, Illinois. Responding to a call identifying this organization as the site of the failed pump and possible cyber attack, Sabin told Security News Daily that media reports have wrongly identified her agency. We were not under cyber attack, Sabin told Security News Daily. Quote, we've been identified as the utility by mistake. It's not city water, light, and power. Well, so do they have the wrong organization? Or... Is this just another pretext to pass more cyber security laws that will track you on the internet even more than you're being tracked today? Yeah, why not? Just have a little false flag attack on the internet, shut down a water pump in Illinois, and then pass some new cyber security law that requires you to have a thumbprint on your website or your Facebook page, an iris scan, so they always know who you are and where you are and who you're connected with. It's what they're pushing for. All they need is an excuse to do it, and this could be part of that excuse. I'm not saying we know for sure, but it does raise these questions, and it's always good to ask questions. That's what we're really good at doing here at InfoWars, asking intelligent questions and looking for the answers, no matter where they come from. Uh, we, alternative sources are just as good as conventional sources. What matters is the truth. That's what we're trying to get to here every single night on InfoWars Nightly News. Moving on to some more interesting truth. In fact, some stunning, like, drop your jaw to the floor truth. We have the EU now. The EFSA has declared that water does not prevent dehydration. Yeah, this is a story that I actually covered on naturalnews.com, and it reveals that an, a new EU directive has now declared that if you sell bottled water and you claim that that water can prevent dehydration, you are in violation of health laws and marketing laws across the European Union today. And believe it or not, friends, it only took them 21 scientists over a period of three years to come up with this astonishing bit of genius decision making. <laughs> they said, the collection of medically, no, I'm sorry, this is, this is my quote, the collection of medically indoctrinated idiots known as the European Food Standards Authority has officially disallowed a product health claim that says water prevents dehydration. It's almost as if they don't know what the word hydration means. You know, the hydrate part that kind of means water and the D part means the opposite of water, sort of a little remedia, remedial uh, English for those people over there in the European Union who have forgotten what words mean. So the dehydration means you're lacking water, and if you, if you drink some water, it adds water. I know, I know, this is old news for those of you who are InfoWars Nightly News viewers, but for the EU scientists, this is all astonishing high-level, graduate course-level science that they haven't even stumbled upon yet. Now, 
As I said in the article, this means the EU does not even recognize the therapeutic ability of water to reverse chronic dehydration, and it makes you wonder, doesn't it? If water cannot treat dehydration, what would they use instead? Vaccines? Are you gonna ha is Bill Gates going to come out with a, a dehydration vaccine? Oh, yeah. Should we all carry around IV bags with needles in our arms and uh, so we can drip ourselves with some saline solution to stay hydrated? Because now we're not allowed to drink water? <laughs> Don't laugh. That could be coming soon. All right. Now, uh, I'm sorry. There's so much craziness in this, in this broadcast tonight. And in fact, we've got a little more craziness coming up with the fix a flat story. I promise you that will be entertaining. But before we get to that, Alex Jones has another video from the road in Arizona. In fact, he's looking at some of the UN takeover of what used to be our national parks. Let's take a look at that video now. Well, here we are at the new Grand Canyon Visitor Center. I knew 14 years ago when I made America Destroy by Design that the UN ownership plaque was behind the visitor center on a big rock, on the face of a rock. Well, now they've pulled it up and put it here out front, and this facility looks pretty new. Looks like they just finished construction recently. Now there's a giant sprawling facility with the solar panels powering it, you name it. But if you read the executive orders that came after this was designated in 1979, in the mid-90s by Bill Clinton, you find it's collateral for, again, international debts, just like Greece having its islands taken over, handed over for debt. So I thought I would just retrace what we covered 14 years ago in America's Web by Design. Now this information is mainstream news. But back then, even though we had the executive order, the Kentucky legislature talking about it, uh, pe people couldn't believe it. So basically, we will now move on down the road uh, to the next uh, site. Here, I'll stop talking right now. Go ahead and take a picture. Yeah, I was over here shooting a video for YouTube, and this fellow came over and talked over the video and acted all mad. So I'll just, I'll just upload it to YouTube. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I will. Well, there you go. Nice, happy citizens. Nobody's around here literally just empty, except for a few people. And that guy heard me talking. I could hear him with his wife about 20 feet behind me go, what? He heard me talking about the UN. He had an American flag on his, uh, on his jacket. And I think the reason that he got upset was, was that he doesn't like to think about the new world order, see? It doesn't work anymore to just say we're kooks or we're crazy. No. No, you can't do that now. So you got to get angry. Now, when I was here 14 years ago, I politely asked about it, and they got very upset. And again, I don't know if you could hear it on the audio, but I heard the guy. You hear my voice slow because I'm listening to him going, hold on a minute. I got to go over here and listen to this. As soon as this guy's done talking, and I'm pretty much almost whispering, talking in a low voice for me, but you don't do that as a slave. I'm a slave who would dare come here and point out executive orders handing over our land. The minute that guy heard me talk about Greece and how its islands were handed over, I heard him go, ugh. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll quit videotaping. As soon as this guy's done, he was walking by, heard me, stopped, didn't like hearing about the UN taking over America, got in my video, and then got his little precious photo. Well, you know what? Just because you guys want to deny there's a world government, just because you want to deny that America is being taken over, it's happening. And there are those of us that care about freedom and don't want to live as slaves. And we're going to continue to face the facts. You know, they're now announcing all over the news a banking dictatorship over Europe run by Goldman Sachs, the exact group we told you would. I told you 15 plus years ago they'd implode the world economy through the three regions, starting in Europe first, then moving to Asia, then North America and collapse into a new bank of a world with a new global currency. Oh, and now it's Time Magazine. Now it's Financial Times of London. Now it's the London Telegraph. But a lot of those publications, like Time, are like, oh, it's wonderful. Now the global government will take over. The bankers know how to run things. And in America, there's literally nobody around me. I can't videotape that over there quietly, just, just like this.
And here is the east sign right here. And a guy comes over and wants me out of the way. You know why? Because he was wearing a blue um, windbreaker with American flags and stuff all over it. That's patriotism in America. Just NASCAR and bomb the Arabs and, you know, oh, we're, we're tough, we're number one. And I come over and point out this is happening and he's not going to put up with it. Well, I'm going to continue to file reports from the road, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you all. Great video there by Alex. I really appreciate how he's pointing out what real patriotism means. You know, this gets back to the New York Times article that we mentioned earlier, which call, calls Alex uh, an extremist. You know, look, uh, real patriotism is saying, let's get back to the Constitution. Let's restore the Bill of Rights. Let's restore the Constitution. He is a restorationist. That's, that's exactly how he describes himself, not as an extremist. You know, gee, I guess it's extreme to point things, these, these things out now in the, in the common mainstream media. It's, it's just incredible. But also, you know, another quick note, sorry guys, about uh, on, on the graphics, I'm, I'm leaping around a little bit, but on the water story, I just had to add this in. I had a, a reader comment to me that they were offended by my coverage of that story because I was talking about how idiotic these EU bureaucrats were in Brussels. And they said, well, I'm a European and I'm offended by your story. Well, astonishingly, they weren't offended by the fact that the EU is run by morons. <laughs> Wouldn't that be more offensive than the fact that we're reporting on it? And it's not a, an attack on EU citizens, because if you're in the EU and you're watching this show, you know, you know what's going on. You know that your government is corrupt. You know it's a bunch of criminals. It's a bunch of banksters. It's a bunch of crooks. It's a bunch of scientific morons that are running the system. So you agree with us pointing this out. But every once in a while, some of these people say, well, I'm offended. How dare you point out that these, these 21 scientists are complete morons because they don't know what water is useful for. Maybe it's because in my story I said that even mosquitoes know to go to water, and thus these scientists are less than mosquito-brained. <laughs> I guess that was offensive to some people. Anyway, I'm moving on to the, to the next story. We have a situation in Georgia involving water, but it's not funny. It's more about torture. Yeah, a, a senior citizen, a woman who was 89 years old, living in a, what, a nursing home, a caregiver facility of some sort, she got into an argument about ice cream. And who wouldn't? You know, it's delicious. And uh, in, in, in order to resolve the argument, two staff members at this nursing facility held her down in the shower and subjected her to waterboarding torture techniques. Oh yeah, waterboarding is now happening in nursing homes. Now these two did get arrested. We don't know what the status of that is, but there's a really important phenomenon that I wanna describe here, and I'm gonna call it trickle-down tyranny, all right? Trickle-down tyranny is because these people in the nursing homes, they are mimicking the tyranny that they see at the federal level. They are mimicking the tyranny that they feel at the airports when the TSA is reaching down their pants, when they see the cops spraying the students when pe with pepper spray and getting away with it. And it's like some of these people out there, some of these workers, they want to feel empowered and emboldened with their own little form of tyranny. So they latch on to it. And, the, and, the, and it, it, the tyranny trickles down, and especially with waterboarding, where it's actually trickling down your throat as they're trying to force you to speak up and, I don't know, uh, admit you took the ice cream sandwich or whatever they were going after this woman for. It's ridiculous that this is going on in America. It's just another sad, really pathetic commentary on the lack of compassion and humanitarian uh, recognition of basic human rights in America today. So I don't mean to make fun of that story. It's actually very, very sad that they would subject a woman to that. But there is comedy to be found in this broadcast tonight. And let's get right to that with, uh, she's a brick. Okay, here's the story. Uh, a woman was seeking to have her rear end enhanced, we'll just say, a little extra curvature in there. She sought out a, a, a doctor who turned out to be a fake doctor who agreed to inject her buttocks with a number of interesting substances, uh, one of those being <laughs> uh, fix a flat tire inflator uh, right here. Yeah, she was putting this right in her buttocks there with some cement and mineral oil. 
So, um, <laughs> I don't know what to say, folks. If, if you're letting yourself be injected with this stuff, you know, there's something wrong with you. And if there's a person out there calling themselves a doctor who, who is, is injecting you with it, there's something wrong with them, too. It's kind of like the intersection of a, a couple of lunatics. Uh, here, here's a story from the Associated Press. A woman who wanted to work at a nightclub started searching for someone who could perform plastic surgery at a cheap price to give her a curvier body. Police say what she found was a woman posing as a doctor who filled her buttocks with cement, mineral oil, and flat tire sealant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey there, woman. Is, is that just your womanly curves there, or you got to fix the flat in your butt? <laughs> yeah, I knew it. It's the fix the flat in your butt, isn't it? Yeah, you got a firm butt now with that cement in there, girl. That's, uh, that's sad. That's actually very, very sad that uh, people would even imagine doing some of that. Uh, we will demonstrate this, but, but check it out. Check out the label. Um, just connect, inflate, and go. But it doesn't say to the club. It doesn't say go to the club. It says for passenger cars, sedans, sports cars, and trailers. It doesn't say for your trunk. Okay, that's not on the bottle. Ah, this is for your truck, people, not your trunk, which, of course, means rear end. For those of you who may not be up on the latest lingo, <laughs> all right, uh, it's sad. It's sad what people are doing to their bodies these days and not even knowing it. And speaking of that, we've got uh, more news about BPA-free plastics. This is another thing that people are doing to their bodies without knowing it. Well, I guess in the case of the of the uh, fix a flat woman, she, she should have had a clue <laughs> when she heard that, that inflation sound. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Why does my butt feel bigger? Um, <laughs> you, you know you can find that in the cosmetic surgery section of your local Ace Hardware store, by the way. Um, moving on to BPA-free plastics. Uh, okay, some of the plastics that are BPA-free still have other chemicals in them. And a BPA-free label doesn't mean a product is harmless, reports Discovery News. In fact, they're saying a new study says when scientists conducted lab tests on more than 20 top brand baby bottles, along with more than 450 plastic food and beverage packages, virtually all leached chemicals that acted like the hormone estrogen, even though many were free of BPA. I have been afraid of this happening for a very long time. I've been watching this BPA situation very closely over at Natural News, reporting on it, covering it, and I've seen this huge influx of BPA-free products. But what are they really made of? It's still some kind of plastic. It's still some kind of chemical. This, this story confirms what I've been really concerned about, and we're going to have to investigate this more and cover it more here at InfoWars as well as Natural News for sure. In fact, I'm going to be hosting uh, InfoWars, the Alex Jones show on Wednesday. Maybe we'll cover it then, get into more details on that. You know, look, there are chemicals all around us, folks. If you really want to be healthy, eat and grow as much of your own food as you can. Buy food at your local organic farmers markets and in food co-ops. Don't microwave your food in plastic containers because the plastics leach right into your food. Even if it's not BPA, it's probably something else that doesn't belong in your body, just like fix a flat. Doesn't belong in there, folks. All right. The future of organic food is at risk. This is a serious story we've now got coming up. Uh, in fact, the USDA is about to make a new decision. It's going to have a meeting next week. This is an urgent situation. They're going to be evaluating with the help of a bunch of scientists who probably have financial ties to the big agri-giants and, and food giants. They're going to be making a decision on whether they can allow new ingredients to be considered organic, even though they're synthetic chemicals. And Mark Castell from the Cornucopia Institute says, quote, we think this meeting may well decide the fate of organic food and agriculture in this country. In fact, there's so much going on now with the aggregation of food companies. More and more smaller companies are being bought up by the big food giants and the big seed giants. So you've got these companies like Hershey's and Cargill and Dean Foods and Heinz and PepsiCo that are owning all the brands that you thought were little mom and pop brands. And with more on that, we're talking with Mark Castell, the director of the Cornucopia Institute, who joins us by phone. Mark, uh, what do you make of all this? What does it mean for the future of organics? Well, I think this is the line in the sand that we all have to draw, Mike. Uh, who owns the organic label? We do. The 
farmers in this country that have worked hard to establish an alternative model of agriculture and the consumers who uh, passionately support them who are a part of what we call the good food movement who want an alternative. So this is the time right now that we have to make it clear to the corporate agribusinesses that have invested and their lobbyists that organics mean something. It's not just a phony baloney uh, marketing uh, gimmick. And we have to um, make sure that it's clear to the USDA. They work for us. Congress gave them the responsibility to protect uh, uh, ethical farmers and their uh, but marketing let partners. Me, but Mark, let me, let me be clear. I want to make sure that the listeners and viewers understand this. If the USDA allows these additives and allows these, uh, these chemicals into organics, could this be a slippery slope? where then they begin to say, well, GMOs are organic and all these other chemicals are organic. Is that where this is heading if the decision comes down on the wrong side here? That's exactly where we're heading. In fact, not only are some of the additives that they're considering uh, adding uh, synthetics, uh, but they were developed by Monsanto through genetic uh, manipulation. Um, these are uh, these uh, DHA, ARA oils that they're putting into even organic baby food. It's in every conventional infant formula. It's in most organic uh, infant formula, and it's in many organic baby foods. These are made from cultured uh, algae and soil fungus. That, uh, Would you describe it then? Strains... I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it, it sounds like it's an invasion of organics by Monsanto and the USDA, which of course tends to side with corporate agribusiness. I mean, is, is this really an invasion uh, or an overtaking, a hijacking of organics? That's what it sounds like. Well, you could say that. Um, Monsanto itself isn't directly involved anymore. They develop these genetically manipulated organisms that do not exist in nature. Who would have thought that we would be feeding, labeling our children's food, quote, organic, with compounds that don't exist in the natural world. So they were developed by Monsanto, but they were purchased by a giant conglomerate uh, in Europe that markets under the name Martech Biosciences. And so this is just one more biotechnology genetic engineering company that is now a member of the Organic Trade Association, the lobby group, <laughs> and they are a selling product. Yeah, it's, it's Orwellian. Yeah, really. And they are selling product. And, and this is selling product to, Yeah, go ahead. Mark. Well, I, I'm sorry, Mark. It, it, it's, a lot of people don't know that this is the same ingredient that's found in infant formula. And I, I don't mean to interrupt you. It's hard to do this by phone sometimes. But isn't this the same thing that's an in infant formula that your organization, Cornucopia, already publicized the fact that this is extracted with hexane, which is an explosive chemical solvent. I mean, you blew the, the lid on that story, too. Yeah. If you go and buy any conventional uh, infant formula, and now today if you buy um, uh, most organic formula, there's one organic formula that we know of in the country that doesn't have it in there. It's called Babies Only, and you can buy that at most of the uh, natural food cooperatives, and you can buy it at Whole Foods. But other than that, and, and, and let me just interject, we know that breastfeeding has just tremendous advantages for the long-term health outcomes of infants sure. and mothers because it prevents uh, um, uh, uh, breast cancer. One of the prime uh, risk factors is not breastfeeding. Um, but for, for, for mothers that either physically can't because of a medical condition breastfeed or maybe doesn't have the support necessary that they can breastfeed, they need to be able to trust uh, the infant formula and trust organics in particular. So genetic engineering, synthetic ingredients, hexane ex extracted. Hexane is a solvent um, byproduct, Mike, which I know you're very familiar with. It's a byproduct of gasoline refinement. It's a neurotoxic chemical. Can you believe that we're using a neurotoxic chemical to process food for any people, let alone our infants. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's also an explosive. Line. I mean, if, if, if you take hexane into a food processing facility, they want to call it organic. If you take hexane to the airport, they call you a terrorist who's trying to get a liquid bomb on the airplane, right? I mean, it's, it's an explosive chemical. In fact, there was a major explosion 
that happened in a sewage treatment plant that was that was uh, tied to a Martech Biosciences manufacturing facility. So they were dumping this hexane in the in the wastewater. It exploded. This 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 kills people. Yeah, it, it's incredible. Let's now let's talk about who owns organic because. This gets to the invasion of organics and the alteration of the, the definition of organics by these corporate agribusiness giants who are taking over agriculture and taking over the food supply. What is the most important thing, Mark, that viewers need to understand about the, the, the aggregation of, uh, of corporate agribusiness giants right now? I mean, who, who is really in charge of the food supply today? Well, I, I, as I said, I think we are. But we've got to impress someone else with that, obviously. The, the, uh, I think one of the tools, we're out to empower, empower consumers. So if, if consumers out there, your listeners, eat organic food, they should go to our website at cornucopia.org, and that's C-O-R-N-U-C-O-P-I-A. And they can do two things there. One, there's some scorecards that rate all the organic dairy brands, which comes from factory farms, which comes from real organic farms, luckily the majority from real organic farms, yeah. and, and soy, soy products, which ones come from imported soybeans from China, which ones come from family farmers in Iowa, and, and Mike, we don't even trust the Chinese for our dog and cat food anymore, let alone organic ingredients. <laughs> and and okay. we rate eggs, yeah, we rate eggs and we rate other products. So that's one thing. Arm yourself with knowledge so you know where your food is coming from. The, the other thing is right now your uh, listeners and viewers can uh, go to our website and click on uh, download a proxy. And you can download a letter. You can sign it. You can stick it in the mail. And if you get it off right away, I mean do it tomorrow, we will hand carry it next week to these USDA organic meetings and impress upon them that people really care about this. And if they screw with us, there's going to be hell to pay, including in the marketplace. We want to make sure your viewers and listeners reward the true heroes and in a boycott. And, and don't send your money to these charlatans. Uh, you know, look at that. Who Absolutely. Organics. Absolutely. Th this proxy is a key action item. Folks, you can find it at the cornucopia.org uh, website. And, Mark, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add here before we wrap this up? Any other action items or alerts that people need to be aware of? Well, I think the very, uh, this, this proxy is important, but the very most important thing is to look at those scorecards, understand where your money's going, because the one thing these giant corporatos understand is your money. That's what they're looking for. And they don't really care about protecting the environment. They don't really care about treating uh, family farmers fairly or respecting the livestock, treating the animals well. They really care about profit. And if you can impress them, that we will patronize them if they conform to the values that we expect in the organic industry. And we will take their profit away if they don't. That's what they really, that's what they really understand, Mike. And we hope your, uh, your, your viewers and listeners will vote with their pocketbooks. Yeah, absolutely. Well said, Mark. I want to thank you for taking the time to join us today and for putting out this alert and taking care of that proxy action item. That was uh, Mark Castell from the Cornucopia Institute. Uh, thank you again, Mark, for your time. And for you out there watching, get onto their website, sign that proxy right now so that they can hand deliver it to the USDA and hopefully help change the outcome of this meeting that's coming up next week. This is a red alert urgent item to protect the definition of organics. So get on board, jump on this right now, take action and help protect the definition of organics against the invasion of genetically modified chemicals and additives that corporate agribusiness giants are trying to shove literally down our throats. It is a big deal. Take action on this right now. All right, well, that's a wrap. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining us tonight here on InfoWars Nightly News. It's always a pleasure bringing you this information. Hope you learned a lot. Be sure to check out this, uh, this broadcast every weeknight here on InfoWarsNightlyNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. This has been Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, filling in for Alex Jones. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you later.